It's me. I've got my bushcrafting gear with me. I'm bushcrafting in May. Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor and as always a huge thanks for joining me here on my YouTube channel, The Bushcraft Padawan. If you're already a subscriber, what can I say? Thank you. If you're not yet a subscriber, what can I say? Well, I'm going to try saying, why not click on that red subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen so you don't miss out on future videos from me. Cheers. If you are a regular subscriber or watcher, you will know that for the past two and a half years, I guess, I've made a commitment to come out every single month of the year and either spend all day outside, spend an overnighter, or do a combination of the two. And that's what I'm doing in 2019. In fact, for the first time in 2019, I've come out not just for the rest of today, but I've actually come out to do an overnighter and spend most of tomorrow out in the woods as well. If you're one of those regular viewers, you'll know that rather than just coming out to potter about in the woods aimlessly, I like to come out with, with a list of things to do, a plan, and May is no exception. On my hit list for this month then, in no particular order, I am going to try out my new hammock for an entire night. I'm going to try sleeping in my new hammock for the first time. So that will be, a, <laughs> that will be an experience one way or the other. Other things that I want to tick off as well, I want to carve an adjustable pot hanger. I want to make a simple one pot meal in my billy can. I would like to try flint and steel as a fire starting method. Haven't touched on that for a little while. So I want to revisit the flint and steel using different tinders, see what I can get to, a, to take a spark. And the other thing that I want to do, which is a little unusual, is I have a, a new second hand video camera. I've actually had it for a while now, but I've never used it at night. And one of the reasons that I bought this one is because it has a, an inbuilt or a built in light on it, which I hope will allow me to extend my filming somewhat into the night time. So those are the things that I want to tick off this month. I'm not going to get any of those things done by stood here waffling to you. So, uh, so let's get cracking, shall we? First things first, I'm going to get my hammock and tarp up. Reason being is it's been a very clear day, it's a lovely warm day, but in the last two or three hours, there's been a big build up of cloud. I don't think they're rain clouds, they're really high, they're really quite light, but it's a significant difference to this morning. So I'm going to use this tree here and this big bad boy here to, uh, to put my hammock between and my tarp above that. I've never set up a hammock and tarp together. I have, it was 24 years ago, but let's forget that. I've never in living memory set up a hammock and tarp together. It looks like the hammock goes up first and the tarp over the top of that, clearly not underneath that, but you know what I mean? The hammock first, then the tarp, so that's the order that I'm gonna do it today. I've also discovered a new um, knot, um, called a Beckett hitch, I believe it is, that will negate me needing to use a carabiner that I've used in my previous videos. It'll also negate me needing to tie um, loops in my strap, my tree strap to string the hammock from. It's all done via a Beckett hitch and therefore is um, theoretically infinitely adjustable unlike the loops that I've been tying in. Let's get a close up and see what I'm doing and I'll talk you through, well no I won't talk you through it because I've never done this before you but you can see what I'm doing and if I feel confident enough I will talk you through it. And that I believe, <laughs> we'll find out when I've been in bed about 30 minutes tonight and it all comes crashing down, but that I believe is the Beckett hitch. The thing I was told to look out for was to make sure that the continuous loop is on top of the strap and above the knot itself. And that, yeah, I can see how that works. That is not gonna come undone unless I pull on the dead end of the strap here. That isn't going to come and done. So perfect. I'm going to go and tweak this now at both this end and that end to get it level and to get the 30 degree angle between the, the, the continuous loop and the strap itself. But in terms of the knot, I'm happy with that. And of course, all I need to do now is to loosen that off, move the continuous loop further up or down the strap 
and I've got my infinite adjustment there as opposed to previously when there was you know every six to eight inches there was a loop and I was carabinering into that this infinitely adjustable off camera I've tweaked the height of the hammock in terms of the tree straps I've adjusted the becket hitches at both ends to get them um, to get the angle that I'm looking for there is one thing that's bothering me though and it's the fact that I've just mentioned that all I have to do to undo this becket hitch is to pull on this end it's quick release it will all pull through which is great for when you're stripping down in the morning not so great if you accidentally catch this around your boo on a night pull it all through and your hammock collapses here's what I'm going to do I'm going to kill two birds with one stone I'm going to take this loose end of strap which I would have coiled up anyway I'm coiling it all up into a really really loose hank there just enough to tidy it up I'm going to place that into this loop it's now acting as a safety catch if you like and I'm going to pull that loop tight there now if that loose hank of cordage hadn't been there the whole becket it would have undone but this strap now is stopping it pulling through and it's no longer on the ground loose around me and if we get any rain in the night and it runs down the tree strap this is acting as a rain stop to allow that to drip off not go onto my continuous loop and onto my precious hammock the hammock is up fingers crossed it stays up throughout the night while I'm laying in it next job is to get the tarp above that get the tarp staked out and then I've got a warm dry area to work from should the heavens open There we go, all set up. Quite happy with that, considering it was, it was the first time I've done that. A couple of things it's made me realise is, the higher up you put your hammock when you strap it, the higher you have to reach in order to be able to get your tap ridge line above the tree strap. So, um, yeah, whilst it might be fun to be higher off the ground, it isn't fun when you're trying to outdo that even further with your tap ridge line I've got ever such a slight concern with this at the far end the the the, the part where the, the tarp is gathered together and bunched up and the continuous loop runs off it it's underneath the tarp by probably I don't know maybe a fist something like that at this end here it's protruding from the tarp by about a fist so my worries if we were to have rain the the actual tarp material itself is exposed there and if that gets wet that's just going to seep down into me and give me a pretty bloody miserable night there's not a lot i can do I, it's not like I'm, I'm too far one way and not the other if i move it at this end and push it that way that end's going to protrude so um i just need i need to have a think about this in the future i guess does, does the hammock need to have more of a bend in it I don't think that would lead to a good night's sleep. Is the tarp the wrong size? Maybe that's, maybe I've got too small a tarp. Or do I need to put, think about putting the tarp, like I've seen some photographs, on a diagonal? This tarp layout you can see here is, is the standard A-frame that I go for. Maybe I need to go for more of a diamond type configuration. I'll try that out another time, but for tonight, I'm going to stick with this and I think before I go to bed I'm going to create some sort of ad hoc, probably with my, uh, my day sack liner, some sort of ad hoc temporary extension to the end of my tap here. I'm just hoping I don't need to get planning permission for the said extension. I'm now going to make a start on getting all the, um, the fuel, kindling, tinder together. You can see that I've already got a bird's nest ready there of 
dead ferns, keeping it off the ground on this bench. I've got a decent couple of armfuls of silver birch twigs, pencil lead thickness and above. And now what I'm going to do is process down some already um, butchered or some already quartered pieces of pine. I think they're pine. I'm going to move, um, butcher those down, process those down into some, um, some fairly decent size thicknesses of kindling. And then hopefully all my fire stuff will be together and I can make a start on my pot hanger and get some food down my neck. Jenga. As mentioned at the outset of the video, I'm going to go with um, flint and steel to try and start this fire here. There's the flint, there's the steel. There's some charred wood that I carry around in my fire starting kit there. It's on top of a small amount of honeysuckle and that's on top of the dried ferns that you've seen earlier on. So let's see if I can get this charred wood to catch a spark. I've not had great success with charred wood in the past. I've often found it difficult to get a spark to land, but let's see if today's going to be any different. Lots of sparks, I hope you're picking that up. Plenty of sparks. Getting one to land is another matter. Okay, I'm scrubbing that. Not because I've got no patience, but because time is ticking on. It's actually, it's quarter past seven at night now. I'm not gonna have light for too much longer. So, something I need to practice when I don't have, when I'm not up against the clock. Let's stick a bloody great big piece of char cloth in there now. Let's see how we get on with that. There we go. Okay, one's landed. I just want to drop a few more on. Now that's landed well, that's taken well. Okay, splendid. Gently does it, Craig. Gently does it.
one pot meal time. The pot being my zebra billy can. The meal being this. Let me talk you through what I've got in here. I love these sorts of meals. I think they're, they're nutritious, they're incredibly filling, they're incredibly simple to make. They take up little or no space at all. What have I got in here? I've got a couple of handfuls of dried pasta. I've got a handful of mushrooms that I've already sliced up at home. I've got a couple of uncooked sausages in here that I've already sliced up at home into sort of bite-sized pieces. I've got a cup of soup. Now, we don't consume cup of soup at home, to be honest. No one really likes it. But when you mix this with water, what you've essentially got is a sauce. When you then start to put solids in like this, what you've got is, is a pasta sauce, essentially. So that's what I've got. It's a really, really simple meal. You can swap the sausage out for whatever you particularly like to eat if you're a meat eater. It could be some bacon. It could be some cooked chicken. Maybe you've got leftovers from a meal. Grab a couple of handfuls of that meat and that will go in there very, very easily. It takes no longer to cook than it does to brown off the small pieces of sausages, which don't take long, and to soften the pasta, so 10 or 12 minutes. So you're probably looking at maybe 15 minutes from start to finish to have a really, really nice, hot, one pot meal. The fire's churning away behind me, it's doing its job, so I'm gonna get on with adding all of this together in the right order, in the right quantity, along with some water that I've brought in with me. I'll get this over the fire, and 15 minutes, I guess, after you know, placing it over that fire, I'm gonna have a meal good to go. Squirt of olive oil, just to help the sausages brown off. Sausages go in there. Remember, they've already been sliced up at home, so that will help them cook through much quicker out here. And there we go, already starting to cook through, fantastic. The sausages are nicely browned off, they're nice and sealed, so I'm just gonna add some water in here, just enough to cover the sausages. There we go. The pasta is now going in. Now I'm going to let that water come to the boil and continue cooking the sausages that are in there and of course cooking the pasta as well that I've just added. Let's have a check-in, shall we? You can probably see, or maybe you can't, but the light is starting to fade here, so I thought I would uh, do a check-in as to what we've done so far. Tarp and hammock. Well, it's up, you can see it behind me. If you see me tomorrow morning on crutches or being casivacked out on a spine board, then it, it didn't go well. If you don't, then it probably went well. I'll let you know if I have a good sleep um, later on in the video. But that went up well, it went up quite quickly to be really honest considering I've never done it before it will of course be much quicker next time because that Beckett hitch um, is something that I've been well practiced in whilst I was setting that up so it'll be even faster next time the fires on the go there the tea um, at my evening meal is sort of bubbling away I've brought it off the main flame it's just sat in the embers now just uh, just simmering away there the adjustable pot hanger didn't quite go to plan it was an absolute nightmare to find anywhere close to here that had the right species, size of, of branch, the right fork, the right diameter, green wood, all of that. In the end, I walked almost back to where my car is, found a sweet chestnut coppice, took something from there, brought it back here, made a decision as to which part was going to be the upright and which part was going to be the, the hook at the bottom sawed that off and then discovered the upright was actually dead wood. I'd sawn off the green wood. Uh, once I started to carve into it, it just shattered, it didn't go anywhere. So abandoned that and I just used part of it for a, a bog standard simple 45 degree angle um, 
pot rest that you saw earlier on in the video as I was hooking my pot on and off it. it it's doing the job, it's doing the job fine. Uh, I just wanted to have a little bit more practice with carving an adjustable hanger, maybe next time. So that's sort of my midpoint check-in there. I'm going to get my face in that casserole. Join me if you will. And um, once I've finished that, I'm going to show you what my uh, evening setup is going to be in that hammock and how I plan to configure it for this evening. Proof is in the pudding. Although the pudding's a Mars bar and a Snicker, so not technically true. Perfect. Perfect. Nice. I actually wish I'd brought a little bit more. I think the sausages are enough, but I probably skimped a bit on the pasta. I should have probably thrown another handful of pasta in there. But it's nice and filling. Really, really simple to make that. You just need some leftovers from home. You just need some dry ingredients. Like I said, some pasta, some sort of powdered sauce if need be, a cup of soup's fine. Some mushrooms just crumbled up so you don't have to sort of faff around with them when you get out here. You could even bring out some cooked meat. You could potentially bring everything out that's already cooked other than the pasta. Just soften that pasta, let it simmer for a few minutes and you've got a really, really, really tasty, quick, cheap, you could, you know, it's almost a, a meal that you can make from leftovers at home and bring it out and enjoy it outside. Really, really enjoy that. I'm going to throw my face into this. I'll see you back under the tarp very shortly. Ah, you join me under the tarp quicker than I'd expected. Why? Well, because if you listen, you may be able to pick out, it started to rain quite heavily. So I've stoked the fire up in the hope that uh, the shower doesn't last long and I've still got fire that I can nip over there and sit by later on. But I thought I'd come under the tap now and show you what my plan is for sleeping arrangements tonight. Aside from the obvious one, which is to sleep on the hammock. So let's have a think about a few things then. One of the observations that I've made previously about the amount of gear that's needed when you go hammocking seems to be this whole... Um, under quilt, over quilt type thing that people have going on. I often thought it was a bit of a faff to be honest, but then the other day, a couple of weeks ago, well, it was in one of my videos, I was just laid in this in the woods during the day, no sleeping bags, just laid in it in a, in a, in a shirt. And I could feel the cold air wherever my body was touching this. I could literally feel, it wasn't a cold breeze, it wasn't a cold wind, but I could feel the heat, the air passing underneath me being sucked away. So I can kind of, you know, I can kind of align with what people's thoughts are around this whole under quilt thing. Having said that, I'm still not planning to buy one. So there's, there's no fear of that happening. What I plan to do with this tonight is to put my standard Thermarest, Neo Air, Neo Therm XA, whatever it is, on here. So sleep on my standard blow up sleeping mat. I've got my Army Issue Gore-Tex bivy bag. In that, I've got the Army Issue Jungle sleeping bag because it's nice and compact. And in that, I've got a silk sleeping bag liner, which adds uh, a nice extra layer of warmth there. I've also brought with me a long sleeved warm top as well and a hat should I feel the need to, uh, to, to put those on during the night. So that's the plan. I guess what I'm saying is I've not brought anything out other than the hammock as part of my sleeping system than I would normally bring. There's no over quilt, there's no under quilt, there's nothing like that. It's my usual sleeping system, but in a hammock. How it's gonna play out, I don't know. It could be the coldest night in living memory. We just don't know, do we? So um, let me get all of this unfailed. Let me get it in here and um, we'll see what the night shall bring. I'm also gonna try experimenting with this camera, switching this uh, this front light on that it has because I suspect as the night is drawing in, the fact that I'm under a tarp, it may not be the easiest thing to see.
Well, that was the first time that's happened. Did you notice the sheer self-control uh, um, I demonstrated there by not screaming like a little girl or swearing at the top of my voice? Just took it in my stride. The first time that's happened, boy, I really hope it's the last. It came as a shock. I've just put the front camera light on. I think, I think that's working okay. Um, let me know in the comments below compared to what it was 30 seconds, 60 seconds ago, something like that. It is quite off-putting because it's so bright, it's difficult to look at the lens because the light is just above the lens. So what I am doing is I'm looking at the monitor just to the side and I'm just wondering from an eye contact perspective what that does. This is me looking at the, the lens. This is me looking at myself in the monitor. Oh, he's a good looking lad. In the lens, at the monitor. Can you notice the eye difference? I'm not moving my head, just my eyes. Monitor, lens. Monitor, lens. I wonder if you can pick it up. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent here. Is this camera, uh, is this, does this light help or is it, is it helping to, um, to illuminate things compared to what they were a few minutes ago? I guess the big acid test will be when it gets really dark if I do any recording then. I'm waffling on, aren't I? Let's get on with this sleeping system. Thermo rest. Bivy bag. Sleeping bag. Sleeping bag liner. <laughs> A sudden dawning realisation has hit me. How the hell are you getting all this in a hammock? Yeah? I mean, at times, let's be honest, it can be difficult enough getting into it all when it's on the deck. When you've got the whole of, of Mother Nature, when you've got the whole of the planet Earth supporting you. How the hell are you getting it in a hammock? I mean, I'm going to find out in the next couple of hours, but um, and I don't know why I'm asking you, because by the time you've answered, I'm already in it or I've fallen out of it. But it does seem an interesting concept, doesn't it? How do you get in it in the hammock? I wonder if I should sit on the edge of the hammock, sh shuffle up into it, shimmy into it, because there's not enough shimmying goes on nowadays, shimmy into it, and then swing my legs over, just as if I was sitting in the hammock just for a, a chilled out summer afternoon as opposed to sleeping in it. Maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll shimmy into it and flick my legs over. What could possibly go wrong? You join me back round the campfire, out from under the tarp again. Why? Well, because it stopped raining and fingers crossed it stops raining as well. So that's good. It's, it's allowed me to get out here. I've just bought myself up some water. I'm going to add some hot chocolate to that and have my evening brew. There's another reason though that I'm quite pleased I was able to get out from underneath the tarp and that's because I wanted to sit comfortably because I wanted to have a, to have a little chat to you. Just, just me and you, nobody else, just me and you. I wanted to have a little chat. How do I put this? What, 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 do, what do you get out of my channel? Yeah, what do you get out of my channel? Why do you watch it? Um, Obviously, if this is the first time you've come across one of these videos, then there is no background. But I suspect most people that watch my videos and that comment are, um, are, are you know, are subscribers or regular viewers. People that people that drop by regularly. What do you get out of the channel? What is it that, that why do you come here to watch this? Um, this is a fishing exercise. I am, I am, I am fishing here. Um, I'm not fishing for a particular answer. I'm fishing for an answer, any answer. Um, an honest one, a truthful one, a genuine one. The reason I'm asking is because, to be perfectly honest, in the last couple of months, I've had a bit of a crisis of faith with YouTube. Actually, no, that, that's not true. No, it's not a crisis of faith with YouTube. It's, it's a crisis of faith with my YouTube channel. That's more accurate. I've had a bit of a crisis of faith with it. There have been several occasions, probably since about the beginning of the year, maybe more February, time and um, when I've just I've just felt, I've just felt like giving it up to be honest just felt like stopping it um, not deleting it nothing like that just sort of stopping maybe not stopping forever but just just pressing the, the pause button at least for some time um, I don't really know why I, I mean I've got my suspicions I, um, YouTube's hard work it's well no, YouTube can be hard work um, there are people who that work a damn sight harder on it than I do I, I know that 
I've put a video out every week since January 2017. It's now May 2019. So we're getting towards two and a half years, getting towards two and a half years every week there's been a video, every week. Since the beginning of this year, mid-January time, there's been two videos a week. My Thursday stalk video, which is, is quite short, sharp and to the point, no more than five minutes. And then these sorts of videos here that are longer form videos, usually with me being outdoors doing something. Um, it takes time and effort. Um, it takes time away from the family. It takes time away from the family, even when I'm at home, because you know, I can spend an hour, hour and a half editing the videos. I know it doesn't look like that when you look at them, but trust me, it, it takes me that amount of time. Um, I know there are people who spend a damn sight longer filming bushcraft type videos on YouTube and editing them. Um, I mean, or at some of the skills that they have. I mean, some of the videos are just, they you know, cinematic is the word. They're, they're award, well, I think they're kind of award worthy things. Even if I don't like the person or that person's channel or, or the way they come across, and trust me, there are a few, I have to, I have to dip my lid. To, uh, to the quality and the effort that goes into their, their filming, the shots, the transitions, the background music. It, it's um, a real skill set, really admire them for that. Um, I don't put that amount of time in. I'm not pretending I do, but it still takes time. And I guess, I don't know. I don't know what I was looking for from YouTube, from my YouTube channel. I don't know what it was I was looking to get from it. I don't think I was. I think at the beginning it was all about me pouring myself into it. I think it was all about me wanting to document my journey, my trials and tribulations, my successes, my failures, my experiments, my getting stuck in, whatever you want to call it. It was about that. And it still is. Um, from time to time, I'll maybe put out a video that's more of a tutorial if it's a subject that I know I can speak with authority about, usually navigation. Most of the time it's me tinkering around with things that I've read about or seen or heard or watched or, or been exposed to on a course. And I, you know, I invite you to come along to see me doing that. I never protest to be an authority on them. I, I hope that always comes across that this is me trying something out, you, you know. You're well, if you get something from it, great, really good, but it, but if you want to learn about it, you're probably better going somewhere else, with the exception of the navigation. Where am I going with this? Where am I going with this? I guess what, I, I guess what it would be interesting to hear from you, and this is, this is not asking for you to pull the violins out, this is not wanting you to blow smoke at my backside or anything like that, I'm getting enough of it blown in my face from this. Um, this is just you, me asking you, just what do you get from this channel? What value does it add? What, why do you come along to it? Why do you tune in? Why do you watch? Why do you subscribe? Um, what, yeah, what do you get from it? Just, it will be interesting to hear. It will be interesting to hear. Um, maybe you can help me overcome my crisis of faith in my YouTube channel. I should say, this isn't, this isn't, a, this isn't, um, What's the word I'm looking for? This isn't a, come on, fill the gaps in. What is it, what am I trying to say? This isn't a panicky video. This isn't a me kind of preempting me closing the channel down. I think I've gone through that stage. I think, I think I've gone through that stage. Who knows? If you don't see me next week, you know that I haven't. Um, it's not me, it's, it's not that. It's not me sort of, you know, raising the red flag to say this is a, the penultimate video. Nothing like that, no, nothing at all. I've got still a huge long list of videos that I want to, to, to um, re record and, and, uh, and, and, and experiment with. I guess I just wanted to sort of share that, that kind of crisis that I've had, that I'm still having, but to a much lesser degree, much lesser degree. Uh, and to hear from you, you know, um, it'd be interesting to hear what you get from it. I know what I get from it or don't get from it. It'd be interesting to hear what you get from it. And what don't you get from it? That's, it, that's a good question. Tell me why you come along, but what could I do better? What videos aren't I recording? Are they too short? Are they too long? Are they too waffly? <laughs> this one clearly is because I'm going on a bit. Do you want to see more navigation or less? What, 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 you know, what would, what would you like to see more? And I, I guess, I guess that is probably the same answer as why you come here, I suppose, to a degree. What would you like to see more? What would you like to see me doing more? I'm not making any promises absolutely far from it 
but it will be again it will be interesting to hear maybe I've got some videos lined up that I don't think are that appealing but actually you know you might out of the blue say I'd love to see this that or this and I can think well that's interesting maybe, maybe I'll pull those videos forward a little bit I've waffled on long enough this hot chocolate is gradually becoming slightly less hot chocolate so I'm going to kill this damn floodlight that I'm looking at it's doing its job I can see now it clearly does its job when it's dark it's very very dark here in these woods now so it's doing its job it's just a little bit off-putting and it does mean that I kind of have to look at the monitor I've waffled on long enough I hope you've stuck with me to this point I'll be getting in that uh, sleeping bag <laughs> very shortly I hope I will why don't you come along and capture the fun and games on camera uh, see me try and get in that sleeping bag yeah I've waffled on a bit haven't I let me reach for that stop button Hey up folks, it is. It's, dear God, it never is. It's 20 to 10, 21 40 hours. Who would have guessed it? That has flown by that evening, let me tell you. Far more quickly than sitting at home on a computer or watching crap on the telly. Flown by. So it's 20 to 10. I think you can, I think it's, there's, there's no argument that this camera light, despite me literally being like a deer in the headlights, um, is, is, a value add. There's no way, absolutely no way, I could have recorded on my other camera at 20 to 10 at night at this time of the year in a woodland. Pointless, completely pointless. I'd rather have been shining a torch on my face and of course this does it for me so very happy with that. Glad I found that little bargain on eBay. I'm putting off the inevitable aren't I? I'm trying to put off getting into this sleeping bag in a hammock. I'm just slipping the old boots off as we speak them on the floor and then <laughs> I have no idea how this is gonna I'm gonna go for that plan of, of, of putting the sleeping bag on the floor the bivy bag on the floor shimmying into it and then flicking my legs over in one fluid majestic gymnastic movement it will be a thing of pleasure before I do though I'm just gonna quickly grab my hat out of my pockets here. I've got two two gear lines here. I've got a gear line that is permanently. Can you see it? There you go. Maybe you can see. I'm moving it over my face now, my There you go. You can see it at the back of my hand. So I've got a gear line that is permanently attached to the inside of my tarp that runs from one edge to the other. But I've also got this gear line, the yellow one that you can probably see more clearly attached to the hammock. I've mentioned this in a previous video. One, it's, it's good from an admin perspective of course because there's an extra extra gear I can hang from there but I also believe it has some um, some properties relating to the way that it allows the hammock to hang evenly um, from one side to the other. I still don't really get that but I, I trust the people who were telling me this so uh, yeah, so that's the other advantage of this. So I've got, got plenty of gear lines. Almost everything is off the floor. The only thing that's on the floor, dirty pots, boots, day sack, coats, shirts, trousers shortly will be, socks, um, camera tripod bag, my possibles pouch with all my bits and bobs in it. My head torch will be hanging from here as well. Okay, I know what you're all thinking. Get on with it, Craig. We're here for the entertainment. Okay, I'll get on with it. Here we go. Oh, I should say, <laughs> I'm putting it off a bit more. I should say, my head torch, you like that? Has the red come on there? Yeah, the red's come on. This is a, oh, this was a gift from um, a former colleague of mine in the army, Paul Coops. Hello, Coops. Thank you very much for this. It's not the only thing he's gifted me over. A period of time he's very kindly sent me, I won't go into detail, but he's very kindly sent me several things, several um, incredibly um, thoughtful things, incredibly um, value adding things. I won't, like I, say, I won't go into detail, you've seen me in some of the things, with some of the things over the last year or so. So I just want to say once again, Coops, um, a massive thank you. I know that you're starting, if not, you've just started a, a new a new part of your life journey or you're about to or you've just started it. Massive 
luck with that mate and if there's anything I can do to help you out with that I don't know what it could be but if there's anything I can do to, to sort of in some way repay the uh, the kindness and, and stuff that you sent me over the past year 18 months do not hesitate to get in touch so that was a really nice touch so I have a, um, a new Petzl head torch there very very pleased with that I had an old one but the uh, the elastic was so perished around the edges that even when I made it as small as I could you could have fitted it around a wheelie bin it just didn't grip your head it was no longer a head torch I'm gonna have to do it am I okay enough of this prattling around let's get on with it the trousers are coming off former Q ladies Oosh. Although, let's be honest, you saw me sat on the loo at the beginning of this video, so... <laughs> I imagine... I imagine that's put most of you off. Here we go. Admin squared away there. So, let's shuffle the bag over the edge. Pea bottle there, by the way, folks. So, uh, don't have to get up in the night and go, th go through this whole rigmarole while I'm half asleep. Oh, no, 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 no. Just reach for the old pea bottle. Right, I'm going to start off. Never mind be bold, start cold. I'm going to get, get into the silk sleeping bag liner first. Dear God, if my mates could see me now, although several of them are watching this video, no doubt. You know who you are. So, I'm in the silk sleeping bag liner. Stage one. I'm going to the sleeping bag now. Oh, the hammock's swinging. Okay, oh, I think I'm in that. Bivy bag. Check. Now I'm going to go for the old stand up and shimmy classic manoeuvre. There's a silk sleeping bag. Watch the shimmy. There it is. Your sleeping bag race. Sleeping bag race? No, the old sack race from school. That's what I was thinking of. The sack race from school. Uh, there's the sleeping bag. Biggie bag to come next, here we go. Ah. That's that. Get it all hooched under my bum. Right, I'm going for it folks. Dear God. Thought this was a good idea. Whoa, whoa. Oh man, this feels odd. Are you there? Can you hear me now? This, <laughs> this does not feel, this does not feel conducive to a good night's sleep. Hmm. I've got about three foot of hammock at one side of me, perfect. And about three inches at the other side of me, less than perfect, I'm sure you'll agree. <sighs> so I'm gonna shimmy myself back off again, readjust my ass position and, uh, and go for this again. Nice though, relaxing. I say relaxing, the swing is relaxing. The fact that I'm three inches from a couple of foot drop is less than relaxing. Let's go again. Still here. So, do you know what I don't think is helping? Apart, apart from the lack, and, lack of planning and organisation, clearly. I don't think... Oh, here we go. I don't think this bloody sleeping mat's helping. I don't think it's helping at all. 
you know I'm going to do? I might deflate it. He's still there. He's still tuned. I'm still here. I might deflate it. Thinking about it, I've blown it up as hard as I can. That's what she said. Um, <laughs> so it's very rigid. It's very stiff. <laughs> um, so I'm going to deflate it and allow it to sink more into the shape of the hammock. Still, of course, giving me some sort of thermal barrier between me and the air underneath. Let's see how that goes on. If this carries on much longer, I'm not going to need this, this lamp on because we'll, we'll hit first light and we can just record in daylight. Here we go. I'm going for the old deflate. Oh yeah, there we go. That was it. That was it. I could, as I was deflating there, I could actually feel the hammock. No, I couldn't. I could feel the roll mat deflating, but sinking into the hammock. So I think I think that was the, uh, I think that was the part of the, the solution. Look, I'm going to be prattling around with this for some considerable time still to come. It's not the best viewing. So I'm going to kill the camera. I'll catch up with you in one way or another. I'm going to catch up with you in the morning. It'll either be here under a hammock or in the local hospital A&E. But either way, I'll see you, well, in a few seconds, but in reality, uh, tomorrow morning. Ta-ta for now. Good night. Ooh. Yep, I ended up on the deck, as I predicted last night. I probably spent an hour and a half, two hours in the hammock. I just... It wasn't that I couldn't get comfy, I couldn't get warm, that was a problem. I think the, um, putting the roll mat, up, oh, it's not a roll mat, putting the inflatable mat in there is a sound idea in principle, but you're putting an extremely slippery surface, the roll mat, against another extremely slippery surface, the silk of the parachute. Only one thing's going to happen when that happens, and that's that it's going to keep popping out, sliding over the edge, sliding out from underneath me, exposing, you know, my bivy bag to the the, the um, hammock material and, and the convection, whipping the heat away. I tried it for as long as I could. I even tried partially deflating the roll mat. No joy. I tried completely deflating it, thinking if there's no air in there and it's it's just the material itself laying flat on the hammock material would that no that didn't do it either so but i don't know probably one o'clock in the morning something like that i ditched the whole idea reinflated the roll mat put it on the floor got out the uh the hammock made myself a little pillow with my day sack and spent the night on the floor it was a cold night i think part of the problem was I've, uh, I've, I've peached too early. I've gone for the, the lightweight sleeping bag too early in the year. We've had some really mild nights here in the UK. Just the other night in my bedroom, I had both the windows wide open. I was sleeping on top of the quilt. Um, it was very warm, but it wasn't last night. It took another dip in temperature. So part of the problem is that the sleeping bag I've come out with is probably too, um, too lightweight for the time of year. Coupled with the, the whole hammock insulation issue uh, it wasn't a night for hammocking last night but a few lessons learned along the way which I'll probably have a think about during today and sum up towards the end of the video but for those of you that were putting money on that I would end up on the deck uh, you you won you won that right I'm going to get out of my scratcher and I'm going to get some breakfast on you may recall last night I got the fire going by eventually dropping a spark from my flint and steel into a piece of char cloth that was in a bird's nest tinder bundle of dead ferns. Blew that into flames, some silver birch twigs on top of that, heavier pieces of kindling, and off we went. I was really surprised last night about once I'd got that spark onto the char cloth after failing to get onto the charred wood, it went beautifully, very clockwork. It does result though in me having a lot of this kindling that I processed down, you saw me doing that earlier in the video, I've got a heck of a lot of this. I've got handfuls and handfuls of this left. So I thought to myself this morning, whilst far from the ideal size and um, length really for feather sticks, I thought to myself, it's a lovely straight grain. Why don't I create some very small miniature micro feather sticks, create a nice pile of those, and then try dropping a spark into some fine shavings of this, seeing if we can get that going. So 
something a little different. I don't normally, I've practiced feather sticks, they're not normally my go-to thing, because I often struggle to find wood in the area that I use that is, um, that is straight grained enough and not free enough, but an opportunity has presented itself here, so let's see if we can get our breakfast fire going by using this. Well, I hope you're starting to get the idea there that despite it being a very small piece of wood, so I've not got a great run between where I'm starting my curl and where I'm finishing my curl, they are curling beautifully, nice and thin, so a decent pile of those with a carefully dropped spark and we should be away. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got a few more of these to knock out. You saw me earlier on in the video using this same Mora Garberg carbon to do quite a lot of batoning. You'll see me going through those pieces of pine and batoning them down into the, the kindling sticks that I'm using right now. So I did a lot of batoning. Most of it was off camera, I must admit. Haven't touched the blade up at all. Just gave it a gentle wipe over with some olive oil before I put it back into its sheath. And you'll notice but even after that batoning, it's still pushing out some beautiful curls. So great, great edge retention. I'm gonna do a review on this in the next probably week or two. I've had it just over a year. So I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's, earned, it's earned to review. I've, uh, it's not just an out the box review. I'm not keen on those, but it's definitely earned its space in having a review. Very, very pleased with the edge retention on this, as you can see. I'm gonna place a few of those kindling sticks that I created last night that I've not yet turned into feather sticks. Just placing those down as a raft, if you like, as a hearth. There's still a little bit of heat coming from this, even after the, the rain we had last night. So I possibly don't need these down, but why not? get into good practice. So there's my my raft there, my hearth. There are my feather sticks arranged as much as I can in a vertical column to obviously benefit from the, the flames and the heat rising. Um, a thermal column, a, heat, a column of heat there, igniting them though, and then once they're going, I'll then place on some more of these kindling sticks, build the fire up and be able to add more fuel on. The thing that I want to try now though that I don't often do is this. At first glance, that just looks like a feather stick. But if you look very closely at the tip of my knife, I'm hoping that you can pick that. Maybe that's a, maybe that's a better angle. Let me hold my hand up. You'll notice, around about my, my palm area, are some very, very, very fine, tight curls. You almost can't see them compared to the mass bundle. But they're just there. What I'm hoping to do is to be able to drop a spark onto those using my ferro rod. Hold the feather stick that way so that these catch. Place that into the column that I've just built here and away we go. So I've never ever managed, in fact I've never tried doing this in the past to be perfectly honest. So let's try it out today. At the moment I'm just filing off some very, very small pieces of the ferro rod itself. Doing it very slowly so they don't actually ignite. I'm just shaving those filings off and I'm shaving those onto those fine curls in the hope that when a spark does land, not only does it have the curls to catch it and to hopefully combust, but it's also got the very flammable filings themselves. Let's try this now, here we go.
Oh, I had one catch then, it just didn't quite take. Okay, I'm going to stop there because I've pretty much charred those fine shavings that I made, so I'm going to make some more. Almost powder like, very, very delicate. And let's just repeat that process again. Oh, so close, so close. If I'd probably been quicker on picking it up and inverting it, I might have been successful. So just scraping some of those filings off for now. There we go. Ah, oh, I hope you saw that on camera. I wasn't making it up, I promise. <laughs> I think I held it up at the wrong angle to the camera. Let's try again. There we go. No, let's go again. What I'm finding is that it's, the actual bigger curls are catching as well, so I'm not going to try with the finer ones. There. There we go. So let's get that into this main column here. Make sure it's burning well first. which it is. Good, good, good. I'm not sure if you can pick out on the camera, but right here at the bottom where I put that, that half board down, that raft down, that's also ignited. So another good reason, even if the ground is dry for putting this base layer down, it's another 
level of fuel because although heat does rise and although flames do rise inevitably if that flame is touching something below it that's combustible and dry and, and is, is in good condition that will ignite as well so not only am I feeding this fire from the top but I'm also to a degree feeding it from the bottom as well no bad thing feeding it from the bottom huh. well the fire is roaring away there Breakfast today is another first for me, at least from a campfire perspective. The humble egg. What I'm gonna what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna tap into the top of the egg a hole with the tip of my knife. Not just a single, not like a pimprical, I'm actually sort of gonna shatter the egg, maybe about the size of my little thumbnail, something like that, but I'm gonna expose a fairly big area, and I'll show you in a second the top of that egg there to allow the pressure to release. What I'm going to do is when that fire is burnt down, I'm going to rake some coals over to the side. I'm just going to stand it in those hot coals to allow the heat to cook it. The pressure that's building up inside from the heat will be released through the hole at the top. And the hole's also a good visual indicator for me to be able to see when the egg is cooked. Both of them. Now I'm going to have the old double, double egg whammy this morning. So I just need to let that fire cool down, uh, cool down? No, I don't. I need to let that fire burn down to give me some hot embers and then I will, uh, I'll show you the process that I go through to do that. I say the process that I go through, it's the process that I watched a girl on YouTube go through about this time yesterday. I've never actually done it myself, so it will either be amazing or I'm going to go hungry this morning. We'll find out in a few seconds. I think it's inevitable there's going to be a little bit of eggshell in this. So I'm trying to, I mean it all adds to the crunch right, it all adds to the experience and the texture right. Something to pick out of your te teeth as the day goes on. So there, that's what I've done there. Just chips away, I don't know, probably the size of a, a thick, small fingernail tip, something like that. I'm going to replace that just at the edge of the fire where I've raked out some hot embers. The hole lets the pressure release, otherwise the egg will explode. Must do that sometime. Maybe I will put an egg on the embers and not chip it off, just for the uh, just for the comedy factor. But for today, for this morning, because I'm hungry, let's play seriously and let's get this on the embers. Well, it's all kicking off around the campfire. Remember that exploding egg I talked about? And I said today wasn't the day to try it out? Well, <laughs> if you look at the closest egg to the camera, he's had a little bit of a meltdown, or blow up is probably a more accurate term. But it looks cooked inside, so do you know what? I'm gonna take that off the fire. I'm gonna dig through the, uh, the hot embers that are in there, and a little bit of dust, and all the other good stuff that you get when cooking around a campfire. And I'm still going to eat it. It's basically told me, it's, it's almost like it's its own time that it's told me that it's ready to be eaten. Fantastic. Just tastes like dippy egg at home. With a little bit of bark and a little bit of a hot ember and quite smoky. But other than that, it's just like the eggs mum used to make. It ain't too bad. Well, those eggs went down a storm. I wish I'd had a little bit more or, or a few more, to be honest, but they were good enough. You may recall last night I, uh, I said a big thank you to, uh, to Coops for sending me the, the head torch that I was modelling 
in my hammock last night. Well, carrying on the tradition of shout outs to people who've sent me freebies. Thank you, Shed, for my, um, for my, an addition to my wet kit, my brew kit. Hot chocolate drink orange flavor. It's, it's a Cadbury's chocolate orange in a mug. Um, I, I'm, I'm assuming, knowing Shed, that this is probably from um, a, a current issue ration pack. They certainly weren't hot chocolate orange flavour in my day. They certainly weren't this size either. They were about three times the size as I remember. Absolute guaranteed quick, um, quick route to diabetes. They, they, they were massive. They were massive, the hot chocolate sachets. I, I'm sure some dietitians come along and, and reined it in. But yeah, thank you Shed. Hot chocolate drink orange flavour. I've got a metal mug next to me that's uh, already boiled up. Let's get that bad boy added in there. <sighs> Stirring it with my bushcraft carved spoon. Look at this. I've sheared the end of my spoon off. There's still enough to eat with and mix with, but I've sheared the end of it off. Sheared the end of my spoon off. It's a it's a common problem of men my age, I believe. <laughs> there we go. Right, hot chocolate drink, orange flavour. Let's have a little sip. See if it lives up to its name. Oh, there goes a few layers of my bottom lip. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The old orange flavour is um, is giving the old taste buds a good kick in. Very nice indeed. Cheers Shed. Hopefully, at some point in the not too distant future, we'll be able to share a brew together around a similar campfire and possibly explode some eggs at the same time. But once again, thanks for this mate and thanks for the other bits and bobs that you sent me. Much appreciated. You join me once again under the tarp on my hammock. Why? Well, once again, you might be able to pick up the fact that it's raining again. Quite lucky really. I just recorded that last shot of me tucking into the hot chocolates and it started to rain so good timing really I've no real need to be out near the fire anymore I can actually let the rain do some of the work for me in terms of dousing the fire so I've retired underneath the tarp how have things gone then probably time to have a good think about how things have gone in my uh, in my outing the hammock and tarp setup itself fairly straightforward as I said previously, it was relatively quick. It will be quicker next time, happy with that. In terms of the actual hammocking though, there's something, I, can, I you know, I'm starting to empathize and I understand why the people that go hammocking take a lot of gubbins with them. I get it. I don't think it's, I, don't, I no longer think it's the overkill that I thought it was. That does leave me in a tricky position though, because I don't want to carry loads of gubbins around with me. I like to go out with the minimal amount of kit and, and, and get by or fashion what I need from, from when I'm outdoors. Maybe I need to rethink that or maybe I need to rethink when I actually take my hammock out and what its purpose is. Is it to sleep in on overnighters or is it just to take out with me for a day in the woods just to chill out in and lay in and read a book and, and more of a, a social type thing? There's also a big factor that I brought out the wrong sleeping bag as well. Let's not forget about that, shall we? I brought out my jungle bag. I thought that the jungle bag, the thermo rest, the bivy bag, the silk sleeping bag liner would be enough. I clearly thought wrong, didn't I? So maybe I won't rule out the hammock for sleeping in overnight. Uh, I just need to make sure that I've got the right sleeping bag for the time of year, because I screwed that up last night. One pot meal went very well, as they always do. The exploding egg <laughs> was, a, was a thing to behold. I wish I'd captured it on camera, but the exploding egg was a thing to behold. It's been an enjoyable day and night out. It's almost coming up to midday now. Uh, let's have a look. It's, no, it's 11.36, 25 to 12, 25 to midday. So the day is getting away from me. I enjoyed coming back out for an overnight as well. I'd forgotten just how, um, apart from the fact I got next to no sleep, put that to one side, I do enjoy it. I'd forgotten just how um, bizarre this word I'm going to use, but how refreshing it can be to get out for an entire night in the woods doing this sort 
of thing. Also enjoyed the amount of extra time that it gives me to do stuff. Even if I don't do more stuff while I'm out, I've just got more time to do it. It can actually become more of a of a pleasurable experience being out rather than a focus on recording a video, which it can sometimes become if I don't give myself very long out in the woods. This wasn't the case. The video was kind of secondary, although I hope that hasn't come across. The video was kind of secondary to what I was doing. Sometimes it's the other way around, which um, is understandable, but can be a little bit disappointing. If you've enjoyed watching this video, if you've enjoyed this kind of being out in the woods, doing this sort of stuff, for a protracted period of time. If you check out on the screen now, you'll see that there are some links to videos that I've recorded earlier this year, and also videos that I've recorded throughout last year as well. They may interest you. As always, huge thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't already, you know what to do. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.